Politics is a game of power. The first rule of politics is get to power. And the second rule of politics is to stay in power. And the state of Uttar Pradesh really, really hates the second rule. In its 35 year old history, no chief minister has managed to complete its five years in office, except for three Mayavati Prabhu Das, Akhilesh Yadav, and now Yogi Adityanath. Over the past 35 years, no political party has managed to get a second term in the state either. So if the Bharatiya Janata Party once again wins over the people of Uttar Pradesh, they will create history. But can BJP finally tame the wild state in the 2022 UP elections? Let's find out. The third rule of politics is service. Serve the people well and they will give you power. Neglect them and see them take away that power. BJP under the leadership of Yogi Adityanath along with Narendra Modi in the center promises double service aka double engine ki sarkar kendra aur rajya mein jab vikas ko sarvopari rakhne wali sarkar hoti hai to double tezi se kaam bhi hota hai isliye double engine ki sarkar ka koi mukabla hi nahi hai the biggest service Yogi Adityanath has claimed to provide to the people of UP is security. Uttar Pradesh has a reputation for, you know, and Yogi's no-nonsense policy on criminals has won over the people of the state who were suffering from gundagardi, gangsters and eve teasing. Along with security, the BJP government has also built a lot of infrastructure over the past five years. More than 15,000 kilometers of rural roads have been built along with expressways good enough to land a C-130J Super Hercules. A metro train in Kanpur along with an international airport in Kushinagar has also been built. An international airport has also been announced in Noida to complement Delhi's IGI airport. A state with good security and infrastructure naturally attracts industries and encourages businesses. Today, UP ranks second in the ease of doing business and it aims to become a hub for defense manufacturing in India. The Yogi government has also been encouraging local businesses and indigenous crafts through its one district, one product scheme. With the inauguration of Ram Temple in Ayodhya, along with the development of Kashi Vishwanath Corridor, the state is expected to get a boost in religious tourists. An international airport in Kushinagar will also bring in more tourists from abroad to UP's many Buddhist sites. Welfare services from the BJP government in both centre and the state also play a major contributing factor in the party's popularity. For example, during Covid, the central government offered 10 kgs of free rice and wheat to all ration card holders. To that, the Yogi Adirnath government added refined oil, pulses and salt thus making the lives of the people of the state somewhat bearable during difficult times. Central government's direct cash transfers to the poor, self-help group and farmers along with schemes like PM Avas Yojana, Mudra Loans and 99% electrification of the state has also created faith in the people about the Modi-Yogi combo. Now it is the job of the government to show how wonderful their rule has been and how everyone is happy with them. <laughs> Everything is not perfect in UP and many people are discontent with the current government and here comes the role of opposition parties. Akhilesh Yadav, leader of the Samajwadi party is the main challenger to Yogi Adityanath. So it is a fight between YA and AY. On one hand, where BJP boasts of improved law and order in the state. Akhilesh Yadav accuses the Yogi government of police brutality. वो सदन में हो मंच पर हो उनकी एक ही भाषा है और भाषा ये है कि ठोक दो तो कभी पुलिस को नहीं समझ में आता है कि उन्हें किसे ठोकना है और कभी जनता को नहीं समझ में आता कि किसे ठोकना है समाजवादी पार्टी आल्सो एक्यूजेस बीजेपी फॉर स्टीलिंग क्रेडिट फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट दे हैड इनॉग्रेटेड इंक्लूडिंग द पूर्वांचल एक्सप्रेसवे ऑन व्हिच मोदी लैंडेड ऑन सुपर हर्कुलिस 
Now, no party can win over people by simply criticizing the government. One also has to offer something new as well. Samajwadi party in this case has copied a page from Arvind Kejriwal's freebie policies and offered 300 units of free electricity to poor people, along with 1500 rupees to women below poverty line and 10 lakh jobs. So will the people of UP go with Samajwadi party? You remember I mentioned earlier that how Yogi Adityanath brought down Gundagardi in the state? The thing is, before Yogi, Akhilesh was the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. And during his tenure, the supporters of his party were the ones harassing people. Therefore, many people in the state still have a distaste for Akhilesh's rule. The party in third place right now is Bahujan Samaj Party, under the leadership of Mayavati. But Mayavati's absence from political activity until recently has raised doubts about the sincerity of her party for the upcoming elections. Despite low activity, BSP still has a lot of clout in the SC community, who are harassed by both general and OBC castes. Among all the major parties, BSP has been the most practical in giving party tickets. So there is a high probability that Mayavati may end up surprising everyone when the results are announced. The fourth major player in this game is the Indian National Congress, under the leadership of Priyanka Gandhi. While all other parties are doing traditional politics of religion and caste, Congress has gone with niche politics by appeasing primarily to women. The party has made a bold move by giving 40% of its tickets to women. And whatever happens to Congress after this, there's one thing that is certain. Priyanka Gandhi has arrived. Priyanka's speeches and the way she met the families of Hathras, Unao and Lakhimpur Kheri victims has impressed everyone. Priyanka Gandhi has proved herself that she is the one to bring Congress back to prominence. Also, I don't have to say this, but everyone is criticizing BJP on farm laws and its COVID risk management. The fourth rule of politics in India is ugly but hard to overlook. That is play the cards of religion and caste. The religious matrix in UP's politics is quite simple. Muslims don't vote for BJP, obviously. So who do they vote for? Among BSP, SP and Congress, Muslims prefer voting for SP. But this might change in this election. Today, overt pandering of Hindus by major political parties and their silence on harassment and hate speeches against Muslims has created a demand in the Muslim community for a leader who is unapologetically Muslim. Especially young Muslims. They no longer want to be just cheerleaders to a non-Muslim party. They want a Muslim leader from a Muslim party who is proud of Islamic lifestyle. Basically, they want a BJP, but for Muslims. Therefore, young Muslims in the state are attracted towards AIMIM, led by Asaduddin Owaisi. In my opinion, the recent attack on Owaisi will definitely increase his and his party's popularity in the state. Meanwhile, older Muslims prefer the party they have been voting for traditionally. Hindus, on the other hand, vote more on the basis of caste, except for areas with mixed Hindu-Muslim population. There, they vote on the basis of religion to BJP. Caste plays a very important role in UP's politics. It is very important for the people of the state that MLAs from their caste get into office and from there give them security, jobs and financial help. For example, as I mentioned before, SEs in the state always had grievances of being harassed by dominant castes, except for under Mayabati's rule, a Dalit leader. There is a strong perception that Yadav's got a free reign under Akhilesh's tenure and Thakur's are prominent in government service under Yogi's rule. There is a very popular saying about India, that is unity in diversity. This saying means that multiculturalism is India's biggest strength. But sometimes I feel that our country is so divided on the basis of religion, language, caste, race and culture that people have no choice but to come together to make things work. Same is with caste politics. No political party can win elections by simply appeasing to one caste. For a party to win elections in India, it needs support of lots of castes. And this is where things are complicated. Castes can be divided into three categories. General castes, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other backward castes. Among all of these categories, OBCs have the highest numbers. This is the category that every political party wants to target. But the story does not end here. The three categories are further divided into castes. Each caste has a certain numerical strength in its category, which determines its influence. Within general castes, Brahmans have the highest numbers followed by Thakurs. Jatavs have the largest numbers among SCs and Yadavs, Mauryas, 
Kurmis and Nishads dominate OBCs. Under the three caste categories, the caste with strong political support is considered privileged or high class. SP's leader Akhilesh Yadav is from the Yadav caste. So within OBCs, Yadavs are considered privileged. And other OBCs like Mauryas and Nishads kind of dislike them. Mayavati belongs to the Jatav caste. So within SCs, Jatavs are considered powerful. Similarly, Yogi Adityanath is a Thakur. So Thakurs are considered privileged today among the general caste. As I said before, since political party needs support from lots of castes, thus each party tries to attract people from different caste categories who have been neglected by the dominant caste of their own category. For example, within general castes, if Brahmins are feeling ignored under Yogi's tenure, then BSP and SP are trying to attract Brahmins, despite both of these parties' core support being anti-upper caste. Things get even more complicated when you realize that the dynamics of caste politics changes with region. I really don't want to go deep into this, it gets really confusing. All I can say now is that among all the political parties in Uttar Pradesh today, BJP has managed to unite the highest numbers of castes from all caste categories under its Hindu nationalism ideology. Okay, everyone knows that it is illegal to ask for votes on the basis of caste and religion. It is also illegal to incite violence against caste and religion as well. So how do politicians attract people from a particular caste to vote for them, you might ask. There are three ways political parties attract a particular caste. First is by highlighting their grievances. Kendra mein Uttar Pradesh sahit desh ke adhikansh rajyo mein bhi Congress party ki hi akele hiya sarkari nahi hai. Jabardas jati wadi hone ke karan शुरू से ही हर मामले में यहां दलित आदिवासी व अन्य पिछड़ा वर्ग विरोधी पार्टी भी रही है दिस इज अ ट्रिकी टैक्टिक कंसीडरिंग अ पॉलिटिशियन हैज टू हाईलाइट द कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर कास्ट विदाउट आस्किंग देम फॉर वोट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कास्ट अनदर वे पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज अट्रैक्ट वोट्स फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर कास्ट इज बाय गिविंग इलेक्शन टिकट्स टू द लीडर्स of that particular caste parties also make alliances with political parties of a particular caste to do the same in such scenario it often happens that a leader from a party defects or changes sides while taking away the votes from his caste and constituency 3 weeks ago 10 bjp mlas mostly from the obc community defected to sp most popular of them being swami prasad maurya while no one exactly knows why these people left it is being assumed that the family members of these mlas were not given party tickets by bjp for the upcoming elections so when 10 obc mlas left bjp apna dal and nishad party both of them obc parties and allies of the bjp got a opportunity to negotiate better deals in terms of tickets for the upcoming election as revenge to sp for taking away 10 of its mlas bjp recruited aparna yadav sister in law of you guessed it akhilesh yadav I have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it even though aparna's induction into the bjp will not mean much when it comes to votes but defection of a family member is a huge moral blow to akhilesh yadav and samajwadi party which is a close family knit party on sp side it has chosen to ally with jayant choudhary of the rashtriya lok dal a jat obc party popular in western up until 2 weeks ago an alliance between akhilesh yadav and a charismatic dalit leader chandrashekhar azad of the bhim party was also creating lots of excitement however things did not work out between them azad accused sp for only wanting dalit votes but not its leaders it seems akhilesh is regretting the breakup as he desperately asks dalit and ambedkarites to support him in a last ditch effort i am sure by now you must have definitely noticed that everyone wants to ally with either bjp or sp giving us an indication that this is going to be a bipolar fight and between bjp and sp bjp has a definite edge the reason is that bahujan samaj party and samajwadi party have only forged caste alliances whereas bjp has a formidable caste combination spread over a strong hindu nationalist base kind of like toppings on a pizza base with extra cheese thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming over to my vlog i will see you soon